Hi everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how you can calculate the press statistic uh, using SPSS. Uh, specifically I'm going to show you how you can do it for nonlinear function or nonlinear least square method. Uh, SPSS itself does not provide you with the press statistic. Uh, if you want to do it for linear uh, regression models, uh, there is a way that if you Google it, you know, uh, uh, you can find it easily. Uh, there are other softwares like Minitab that they provide you with press statistic, uh, but they only work for uh, linear regression model, and they're, they're, they, you cannot uh, use them for finding the press statistic for nonlinear function. Okay, so uh, my goal today is to find uh, the value of the press statistic for uh, one of the problems that I, I'm dealing with right now. I'm writing a paper and I, I have a bunch of different you know, models that they are uh, predicting the same quantity but as you can see most of them are nonlinear and uh, the goal is to find these parameters and then f uh, determine which model can predict the data better. Uh, so for the sake of this video I'm going to focus on model number five. Uh, so these are models that are used for predicting the uh, concentration of chloride on the surface of uh, concrete when they're exposed to uh, seawater. So uh, in this model C sub zero is basically a known value so you can test and find out. Um, but the uh, parameter alpha is something unknown that you need to uh, fit it to the data and uh, find it using nonlinear least square method. Okay, so let's get it started. Uh, I'm going to show you the data set that I have here. So I have time, I have the values that have been uh, reported or observed okay, in the field. So I have time from one year to four years and then uh, the concentration of chloride on the surface okay so let's get to it uh, and um, basically start doing calculating the press statistics so let's uh, go back to this formula for a second so th the press statistic basically if you have let's say 10 observations okay what you need to do is you every time you calculate your uh, nonlinear regression you have to remove one of the observations from your data set and calculate uh, and find your parameter and then predict your the one the predicted value that does remove with that model so if you have 10 data points you have to perform the regression analysis 10 times each time you have to remove one one of the observations get your model, predict the one that was removed and then subtract that from the observed one and then you square it and at, in the end you just uh, basically sum all of these values. It will make sense if I do it in action so let's get to it. So this is the data set, 8 values. Okay, What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to analyze, regression and then nonlinear. So let me bring it here so my dependent is the concentration of chloride and if I go back to this formula so we have C sub 0 I'm going to use 0.11 okay that's because I know already uh, so uh, this is something related to this problem so point, point 0.11 plus alpha LNT alright so I have to write the model here so point 0.11 plus I'm type A multiplied by ln and that gives me time okay now I need to determine or specify an initial value for a whenever you are doing a nonlinear regression and you have a parameter you have to specify um, uh, initial value so a is I'm gonna start with one okay now here is your model okay and then you have to make sure that you click on save and uh, save the predicted values. I'm going to click OK, click continue and there we go. So this is the regression model with 
full data and it tells you that your parameter a is 0.094 and your R squared is about uh, 0.87 which is uh, pretty good so this is not what we want okay so let's go let's close this window all right before I start uh, so this is a list of the saved predicted values all right I'm gonna delete these because I'm not gonna use these right now so what I need to do is I need to have an Excel sheet to keep track of these values all right so these are my observed values I'm gonna save them or copy them go to my Excel sheet uh, I'm gonna call this one observed and paste them and then we're gonna find the predicted soon okay and one by one we're gonna add them here okay so let's do it so go back to your SPSS now I'm gonna remove this value from my list so just you have to keep track of them so I'm gonna remove point 11 do my analysis one more time not linear Okay, I'm not gonna change because the model's already set up so we're good to go click OK and as you can see uh, it predicted this value to be 0.11 which is very good because that was exactly what we had so I'm gonna type predicted 0.11 alright so I'm gonna type 0.11 back here this time I'm going to remove 0.12 so we do this for every observation so we remove one by one and do the sample uh, the modeling so go back to regression nonlinear repeat okay so this one we got 0.13 so I'm gonna go back here so 0.13 so the original was 0.12 we got 0.13 so I'm gonna back put back 0.12 here delete these values I'm gonna this time remove 0.18 and analyze and repeat a regression this time we got 0.15 for that removed one 0.15 all right and then um, we're gonna do this for all the values okay so if I am not mistaken that that was 0.18 so let's this time delete 0.17 and the reason that I'm deleting this column because I don't want them they, they they start adding up okay so it's gonna get crowded I just don't want that to happen all right so remove this one that was 0.17 in here all right so for 0.17 we got 0.18 so 0.18 put 0.17 back remove point the next next point regression linear so we got 0 0.20 0 0.20 so we have 0 0.18 here we remove 0 0.23 now linear so we got 0 0.21 back point 23 remove the next point we got point 23 so if I, it was point 21 and the last point is point 25 okay And we got 0.24. Okay, so we have the observed, we have the predicted. Now, if you look at this formula, okay, this y hat is your observed, this y, y sub i is your predicted. So all I need to do is calculate this one and add everything together. So if I go back here, okay. So I'm gonna say doesn't really matter which one first because we're squaring them. So this one minus this one squared. 
and I'm gonna drag the whole thing down so it's gonna come calculate the same thing for every row and in the end I'm going to add them up alright so this is your press statistic when you, whenever you have a nonlinear function uh, again this works if you have a small data set if you have a data set you know made of um, thousands of data points basically this this is very time-consuming um, there must be some ways you can code it you know and do it automatically but if you have a small data set this is a way to go I hope you like it you know let me know what you think uh, I'll keep posting new videos right keep in touch have a good day